go. Let's get the recording. Um, where's my record? There we go. All right. Took out my drink. It's really chilly back here today. I don't know why it is so My little, my little perfectionism has to be taken care of. I swear I've got to learn how to edit these videos because <laughs> constant boob shots in all my yoga videos. Um, good morning, everyone. So, uh, excuse me while I just let my heater blow on me right now. So this back, so my, my yoga space is um, a built-on uh, room to the rental house that I live in. And so there's like no sub flooring, there's really not any insulation or anything. So this back room gets a little chilly and um, can't think about leaving the heater on. <laughs> um, so excuse me while I shiver like a little chihuahua. Uh, today's conversation, today's lecture is about stress and how to manage it. So, uh, what I want to do is I want to talk about how it affects your body, what is it, um, and then also how, um, how we can use uh, different, different techniques to uh, really, el not eliminate it, but to make it where it's the right type of stress is a, a, is a good example, right? So we all experience stress, even in our daily life, it's stress and is a natural part of evolving us and making us do things, right? However, when we are constantly in that space of stress that is fight, flight, or freeze, then, um, then that's not good on our, on our uh, immune system. Uh, it's not good on our thoughts. It's, it affects everything because you have the thoughts rolling through your mind and each time a thought rolls through your mind, whether you're aware of the thought or it's playing in the background because we have like a synopsis going off, like just fireworks constantly going off where the, the primitive mind is filtering information. It, basically, it's looking around like a video camera to your surroundings and then trying to relay every part of what it's experiencing with like past experiences. And so I tell people that, you know, being late and having to run back in um, and try to get the key in the door becomes impossible. Or if you're late um, for a meeting or whatever it is, every red light is no longer just a red light. Every red light now is every time you've been late, right? And so that thought is tethered to every experience of being late. And so the mind doesn't understand the difference between uh, a thought, a memory, um, or the present moment. It just, it's just a processor, kicking out chemicals so that this little avatar can move around and do stuff. And so what happens is, is that we, whenever we're stressed out, we tend to just loop out in the system, right? So say you're late and you catch a red light. Well, for one minute, see, you notice every friggin' red light that you've caught, right? And then uh, every red light that you catch irritates you even more. It heightens the whole stress. When in reality, it's not even helping you get there quicker. It's not making the moment better. This is undue stress on the system, right? This is stress that we're not supposed to experience on a regular basis. And most of us, I joke with students that um, we used to be running from uh, <laughs> running from saber-toothed tigers, right? 
Um, now we're running from bills and bad relationships. And so we still have this like heightened level of fight or flight or freeze um, experiences within our day because we don't have just normal stresses, right? We don't have the like, oh yeah, I need to get up and take care of, you know, brush my teeth because if I brush my teeth, then I'll have healthy teeth, right? That's a normal, like, little stress that makes you do something. It's an agitation that moves you into a direction of hopefully self-care, right? Well, what happens in, um, when we click into the fight or flight, that's so deeply linked to your reptilian brain. Like, it is like, you no longer, for the most, most, of us unless you've practiced meditation and control of thoughts you are being you are just like that thought goes and you are off on that tangent because the stress response is so strong like the chemicals that start to um, pump out of your brain just the traveling nervous system itself um, is hard to override unless you actually practice overriding that stress response all the time and so what will happen is like something will happen you know something spins your world out and all of a sudden you're chicken little and the sky is falling at every scenario or even worse what we're experiencing right now which is deeply deeply embedded into like our safety net so what you're seeing right now is in your own life and maybe in the lives around you this like heightened stress of food clothing shelter these are our base needs and so when people's base needs are not met if you cannot get food clothing shelter or you begin to worry about those aspects because that is such a deeply embedded stress response like this is like your baseline reptilian brain stress response it will override your whole system it will override every thought or to the point that even the thoughts that don't have to do with the fact that you know food clothes shelter might be at this time every thought is linked about how getting out of that threatened space and so any time that our nervous system becomes um, triggered like that on food, clothing, shelter, these are baseline responses. Some of the things that will start to happen, you'll start to have back problems, lower digestive system. That's the, that's the nervous system just like, you know, being overly active and the nerves are um, making muscles and other organs that it feeds at that space. Um, overly activate. So you have to think about it. If you go into feet, um, fight, flight, or freeze, you need to run, right? Like I said, we used to be, we used to run from saber-toothed tigers, right? Now we're running from bills and bad relationships with the same amount of stress as though it's going to kill us. Because the moment that food, clothing, shelter is threatened, and we're talking about this um, sympathetic nervous system, this reptilian brain clicks in. And then every thought is about reining those abilities in, securing the ability to food, clothing, shelter. And you're gonna do one of three things when that is threatened. Your thoughts are gonna be freezy, <laughs> they're gonna be fighty, right or they're gonna be flighty right um i personally went through a huge you know this is not what i want a flight i was just like i'm out of here right i can't do this i'm out of here some people are freezing which in in this case and um, what we're going through right now might equate into like overeating lethar lethargy binging um movies um, so much that you're not being active in any other aspect, not being creative in any other aspect, and maybe overly sleeping. That is a stress response. That is a freeze 
stress response in this situation. Now, if you were out being, you know, chased by the saber-toothed tiger, you would hide behind a tree, right? Same stress response, the brain doesn't know the difference. Or you're going to trigger into fight, right? Which some people, um, I went through this phase too where I just like kept myself consumed and busy with things, right? That's that agitated energy level, right? Um, some people you see are um, protesting um, the, the shutdown or the you know, stay at home orders right now. And so I beg of you to, as much as it irritates me too, to understand that they are working off of a reptilian brain. Every thought that these people have, with the exception of the, some that are just like, don't understand the science of it and stuff like that. You know, we have a, we have a aspect of the, the population that's not fully educated on everything. So that's another respect in that. But if you are worried about food, clothing, and shelter, those thoughts are going to pervade everything. And how do you, how do you handle stress and how is this going to trigger you, right? Are you laying in bed and eating all the time? Or are you out overly working or now uh, protesting and fighting against the information that is needed for you at this moment? <clears throat> or are you fleeing? Are you just like, I'm out of here, and you're just like in complete and utter denial of this, right? So we all have these aspects, and the, this is stress on the system. It's still activating and causing all of your thoughts to circle around what the stress is because it's such a baseline stress. As a matter of fact, it's such a baseline stress that your nervous system that is uh, attached to this information is um, downloaded and developed within the first years of your life. So if you ever have had a kid or know a kid, a very young period, especially like the first year, that you can't even make them think beyond like food, sleep, and comfort, right? Their brains don't work on anything else. And you still, we all still have that pattern embedded within our psyche, within our nervous system, within ourselves. So that's the, that's the what's going on. How do we um, get past that? And last night I had a wonderful experience um, with a bunch of friends on Zoom and we just, that's probably why I'm a little sounding like a jazz singer this morning. Um, that, you know, just lots of laughter, just raucous silliness and stuff. <laughs> but what I got from that is a couple of things. A um, couple of reminders is that, A, we need to be aware of this. So if we're aware of what's going on, we are in the frontal cortex, right? And so if we're in the frontal cortex, that means that our brain is sending synopsis and sending electricity and thoughts to the front, the more civilized part of our brain, rather than letting it reside in the reptilian brain where the stress response is, okay? So it's, a, it's proven that experienced meditators can actually grow their frontal cortex up to 25%. That means that when you have these automated when you have stress responses, they aren't so automated into the reptilian brain. They'll actually circle around to civilized thought first, right? And see, like, like, do you really want to flip that guy off that just cut you off on the road? Or do you want to realize that, you know, man, he's probably so stressed about being to work, you know, that he's going through the every single time he's been late for work, right? He's not even going through that very moment, right? And so we have to be very aware of this now moment. 
beyond just being aware of every now and then, why this one? Because this is a global shift. This is, you know, this is a global pause. This is something that our modern day society has not experienced. Um, and uh, I think that, you know, uh, I think it, I think that it could be good for us. You know, I see how in all the chaos, I can see the gifts because I've stepped out of stress response. <laughs> and so now I'm looking, okay, why, why am I experiencing this into the world? Rather than, why is this happening to me? Why am I experiencing this into the world? <laughs> and then also, um, being aware of this, I talk about not focusing on the problem, but focusing on the possibility. So if you're circling your mind around the pro problem, your mind is just circling the stressful thought, right? The thought itself is triggering your hypothalamus and your pineal gland and just like dumping cortisol into your system, um, dropping your serotonin levels because your digestive system isn't working as well. You know, so all these chemical processes are happening that become a domino effect and you have to stop it as a civilized person and take a hold of what the natural chemical processes are doing just off of thought. And so by stopping and stopping thinking about the problem, you're actually stepping out of fight or flight and going, oh, the stressor's there, what's possibility? Right? And possibility happens um, as creative thought, and that is a frontal cortex thought, right? And so rerouting that. Um, another thing that you can do in these situations to negate some stress is give. And I know a lot of you people might not think you have anything to give and you know you definitely might not have anything monetary to give but it was a discussion that we've been having and it's something that an early teacher taught me is that he told me money was paper energy right and energy never dies and energy is always transforming and moving and energy cannot be static right like it's just the nature of it and also, you know, um, if you think of money as like a conduit that you need to keep going to get it back to you, then you're going to find little places to give to someone else in the, in the, in the circuitry. And uh, my friend Holly had such a beautiful way of explaining it and so money could be like a field of possibility we've talked about like what reality is this like <laughs> field of possibility right and this wave pattern and if you can imagine um, we're all ships on an ocean trying to go somewhere and if you'll give like your neighbor just a little bump that can like propel them and then the ripples from that little bump will spread out and start to bump everyone else going. But if we are staying in this space where it's like this stagnant hole, no one's moving, right? And so find something small. I don't care if it's a moment, if it is a service, if it can be something monetary, even, you know, a dollar to someone else that you see like, oh, I could help their momentum today, even with that. And that's the same process as on how we engage people. Are we engaging them where we're kind of bumping their boats forward with our words and our energies of all kinds, not just paper energy, right? And another early, uh, my early teacher taught, told me basically that um, money was paper energy and if you put it in your hand and you close your hand around it then it can't escape and it, nothing can get back in right um, and you can think about this in the same way of anything that you want in your life if you want more friends you need to be more of a friend 
right? You need to give that out into the world. If you want to um, <coughs> feel successful in your life, you need to try to give success to people around you. They've done studies where um, when they um, dissected movements in the world, like, you know, like world movements, like the Me Too movement or something like that, it's usually the leader that starts it and is up there saying, hey, 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 look at this. But what it is, is it's the secondary person that comes in to support the leader that actually ends up drawing everybody to that leader. And so if we're finding a, a, a system where we want to uh, move things along, we need to be the, the surrounding bumping force, not necessarily always the force, right? Um, and just the other aspect of it, if you can step out of yourself enough to give into the world, um, it really, that is a, that's an altruistic um, action, and that altruistic action only comes from a higher brain state. You can only think altruistically, think about everyone else, when you get out of those base needs. And so, unfortunately, back again, why we have some people reacting so strongly is they are so embedded into personal base needs in their life that they can't get past and get to the altruism because they haven't mentally, mentally and spiritually trained themselves to on a regular basis. And which, but what you do find is that people who tend to be in charities, whether it's a church charity or a food bank or um, something like I'm involved with, with Burners Without Borders, these are people who have trained themselves to be altruistic at the highest states of stress, right? Which ultimately feeds their chemical system. Right? Because it's keeping them out of that reptilian fight or flight brain that is just digging in that chemo plant, right? And so that those are two simple ways to manage stress. And then the third is breath work. Breath work, I know us yogis just talk about the breath all the time, right? Breathe, 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 right? Um the breath work is the number one thing. I tell people if you aren't breathing, you aren't doing yoga. You can be in a physical posture, but if you do not have that cycle of breath, like the paper energy, things aren't moving, you're dying. You're going into atrophy, right? You're not doing yoga. You're not yoked or unioned with the moment and the current that's going on, the flow that's going on. And so um, a, a beautiful thing about it is that within three good breaths, it usually takes several rounds of getting to three good breaths, but within three good breaths, you're changing the chemical makeup. So this reptilian brain has a hard time taking over if you have taken over the breath. So if you remember my previous lectures that the breath itself is the one system, the, the, uh, the pulmonary system is the one system <coughs> that can take over every single system. So the breath itself can override the nervous system, it can override the thoughts, it can override pulmonary, excuse me, um, it can override the, the, the heart rate, it can override the digestive system. And so, if we can get a container on the breath, we can actually stop the stress response. So, those, that's like my little stress response lecture on basic things that you can do and why and what stress is, right? Um, so, if you have any more questions I plan on doing, I do lectures uh, just about every morning at 9 a.m. This is my heart's desire. I I have I've always wanted to help people go through and make it on the other side of trauma because I've made it myself through extreme traumas in my life and post-traumatic stress and 
all those things and I've learned to come out on the other side where where I can move through my world with a, a, a fraction more awareness than I'm used to and a fraction more peace than I'm used to and every little bit counts, right? And so if you're interested in lectures, if you're interested in one-on-ones to help you through this time, help you through all your times, really figure out on a scientific basis on how you can handle just even day-to-day life, then let me know. And those of you on Facebook, I will see you again soon. Those of you who um, joined me for live lecture and class, I will be with you in two seconds. Let me set all this up. Oh, it's so cold back in this room. All right, guys. Much love. I hope you enjoyed.